Good morning, everybody. It's Leslie here for another Zoo Adventures. Very excited you're all joining us today. Um, so today we're actually going to be talking about some myths, maybe busting them or seeing if they are actually true. And while Chelsea and I are hanging out in our wonderful golf cart that takes us a lot of places around the zoo, and uh, I thought we should start with our first myth. Well, okay, first, Leslie here. Hey, everybody. Who's behind the camera? Chelsea. Right, because I just said Leslie and Chelsea. But if you didn't notice, we're missing somebody. And the, the driver's seat is empty. Yeah, the driver's seat is empty. And I think that'd be a great time to do with our first myth. And the myth is um, Steve is always on time. Um, is that truth or is that busted? Is Steve always on time? Hmm. Let's see. What do you... I mean... What do you think? The seat's pretty empty. <laughs> yeah. I feel like there's been quite a yeah. few. Steve. Yeah. Yeah. I have Steve. our list for today. Oh my goodness. You guys ready? He's finally here. You want to do the intro? We we are going to when say. You want, to do, you want to do the intro? Yeah, we're already doing it because. What do you mean doing it? Busted. What was? We haven't even started yet. How could you be? What's busted? What's uh, busted? Well, remember today we're talking about um, some kind of like common things that people believe about animals yeah, that may or may not be true. Right. Yeah, so well, I challenged the um, the Zoo Adventures sure. hey guys, digital you? guests yeah. um, to a myth. And the Before myth, you started without me? Um, well, the myth was Steve is always on time. This, wait. Which we have busted. Listen, we were both here. Yes. And then here comes Steve gallivanting along. I have the list. He does I have, have the, the list. list. <laughs> You've got the list. <laughs> Uh, so you've already said hello. You've already done. I already that. said hello. Said, well, I guess we should go ahead and go to our first. Location. Yeah, I think we're ready to go because busted Steven is always late. Um, if you haven't noticed, the common, now. the common theme through a lot of these program, or a lot of these new adventures, is Steve is running late. No, he, he walks late. <laughs> oh, maybe that's true. All right, well, let's head to our first. Let's lane. head to our first Thank one. You, everybody. <laughs> Gorilla, la, 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 la. I'm pretty sure that it's only two L's, but it's okay. two. So just no, gorilla. Their name is Gorilla, Gorilla, Gorilla. Gorilla, Gorilla, Gorilla. That's scientific. That name? is their scientific name. So really. So how confusing we want to be. Let's just say let's just go with gorilla. <laughs> a gorilla. Gorilla. Western lowland gorilla. So really amazing animals, right? Chelsea's got a, got at least one on shot. There's kind of playing over here, way off on the yeah, corner. You may not feel like get him. It Chelsea. looks like they were kind of wrestling. Oh wait, here they come out. Maybe. Maybe they'll come out. Those are the two <coughs> quote unquote babies that we have now. All right, so gorillas. Myth busters mm -hmm. talking about misunderstandings of animals. So, so what you got for me? Let's ask you are they the myth is that gorillas are gentle giants. That's oh. the myth. Is that true or false? Busted. Listen. So so the gr myth King Kong. Is, right? Big scary. Sure. A lot of times big scary. We always do the, mm -hmm. you know, the, the beating, planet of the apes, the, beating, too, the right? chest planet of the apes. I'm going to yeah. say TV has taught me they are not, they are terrifying. And like, look, look and at you this asked skull. me to bring this. Yeah, look at this. Look at those look teeth. Look at those teeth. And if they just open them, I mean, that's terrifying. That's got to be a carnivore, too. That's got to be something right. that's wicked aggressive. I agree. So you're saying, I'm saying, you're saying the gen myth, the statement is gorillas are gentle giants. You're saying busted. busted. That they, are so very you think aggressive. they're aggressive and mean. Mm -hmm. All right. By nature. The answer is. Dang it. They are very gentle but giants. What about these big old teeth? Let's talk about that. That's a great thing to talk about. I'll trade you. Okay. So, as you mentioned, those teeth are nasty looking. These are killing teeth. These are canines. Yeah, that looks these like a carnivore to me. Teeth. These are chewing teeth. Do carnivores have chewing teeth? Not like 100% carnivores, right? right? So More omnivorous, right? Omnivore. And he uses that skull, he uses those big teeth to scare different animals away. I mean, that would he work with me. He opens that up, makes a big bellow, and that kind of says, stay away from me. And he uses that as a gate. He uses that to keep other animals away. Okay, so we're still, well, these are all scary things. So the use of that, he's not going to fight you. He's not going to come bite you. He's going to be trying to threaten you away, so he's not going to be aggressive. 
He's also not a carnivore. He's almost exclusively an herbivore. But, uh, that's for use. But, that's for just for that demonstration. Not those teeth, though. But it works. If that's for demonstration only, true, you think about true. that. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to stick around. That is very scary. It's like scary. Mm -hmm. And these teeth back here give him up as he's going to be grinding up those leaves, grinding up fruits, grinding up sticks and twigs. Okay, so it's more for show. Exactly. So what we're saying is that they're not really aggressive, but they will kind of try to scare you off. They will try to scare you off like a lot of animals. Will, yeah, right? but that's, they feel threatened. They're, they're gonna not. Be, oh, I'm going to be big and right. scary. Don't come over here and mess with me. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But the lifestyle, they're laid back. You see. You yeah, see what you get. I guess you're... Can you show them Mo, our big, large male, just sitting there reclining on a rock? Nothing more than that. And their lifestyle, they live in small family groups. Okay. There'll be a dominant male, a couple female, a couple three females yet, and some of the babies will stick around. But no, they're not out. They're not like chimps. They're not like waging war, not looking for other animals to get involved with. They're kind of doing their own thing. Just munching on some leaves, grabbing a stick, making a bed, and sleeping. Yeah, finding a nice sunspot. I think one of nice. them is doing that Chelsea's on right now. Yep. So, yeah. Interesting. So the myth... That they are gentle giants? Not true. They are very they are certainly actually. a gentle giant. So those movies you mentioned, King Kong, Aaron Jezu, if you're watching, <laughs> calling people out, calling, calling Aaron out on this one. He's a huge King Kong. He's a big gorilla fan. But no, yeah, I'm not familiar either. Um, I did um, pass Keeper Chris earlier today. Okay. He wanted to give a little shout out for gorillas on the line. Okay, what's that? It's a donation opportunity for your cell phones. The zoo is still collecting cell phones. You can bring your cell phones in. There's material in the cell phones that is being that can be harvested from Africa. Oh, okay. So if we can recycle that material, we don't have to take it. We don't have to go into Africa and take it out. So we can recycle the material within the cell phones. Awesome. So all of those phones, because I know like some, the new cool phone is always like, always oh, coming. we want this. Great point. But if you have that and you get a new phone, if you take that old one or device and give it to Grills on the line. Yep then that's going to help actually save animals in Africa, including gorillas. Excellent point. Yeah, and you can bring your phones to North Carolina that's Zoo awesome. and we'll recycle them for you. Though I am, I'm a little disappointed that, um, that I watch TV and mm -hmm. TV isn't always correct. <laughs> because that's where I thought, that's where this myth came from, is that they work. <laughs> <laughs> They're very aggressive. Great point. Yep. I guess I have to do more research next time I watch TV, right? Perfect. <laughs> Gentle giants. Awesome. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, Sorry. Right? That. I, I'm, I'm good. Yeah, I got a, little, <clears throat> got a little something in my throat. Sorry about that. It was too scary. It was <laughs> nice. I don't, so, I don't, ooh, don't. Big stretch. I don't know how people can be scared. I mean, what, yes, they are scary to look at at first, but when you get to know about them, they're really cool animals. I love bats. That's all I have to say. What kind of bats are these? These are vampire bats, which I know the red light is really, like, perfect, right? <laughs> <laughs> so they do drink blood, but they don't drink yes. people blood. No. So we're, we're just going to go ahead and get that myth all the way yep, out there. They're just drinking usually large, um, four-legged, hoofstock kind of animals. Exactly, yeah. So you get them when they're sleeping sometimes, you get them when they're walking, make a little tiny incision on the leg or a near an ear, and they just lap up a little bit of blood. Right. A teaspoon or two, if I'm not mistaken, a tablespoon or two, if I'm not mistaken. So that much. And look at them. They're grooming them. They're like doing a lot of grooming. They spend a lot of time grooming themselves, so they are relatively very Absolutely. clean. And each other, too. Mm -hmm. Kind of take care true. of each other as a colony. But one of the biggest myths out there that I think of right. is that I've... That, that a, that he flew into my hair, or he's getting close to me, or she's mm -hmm. coming real close, or why'd she why'd she do that? Why'd she fly into my hair? They are blind. Blind as a bat. Blind as a great another one. Right, yeah. So these are not so since we're in the dark, it's kinda of hard to do our I know. Not <laughs> um I'm gonna go so, busted. That so is busted. I love it. Yep. Yeah. So bats the the myth, the statement, bats fly into my hair. Busted. Right. Not they're true. they're blind, busted. Busted. Mm -hmm. Busted. All bats carry rabies. Busted. 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 Mm -hmm. Busted. 
I think it doesn't help that they, the way they fly is kind of a little chaotic, you know, it's kind of all oh, over the word. place. Yep. And I know when I'm, when it's, the sun has kind of just set and I see something flying around, I can usually say, that's a bat because yep. of the way that it's flying, because it's a little bit more all over the place. But that's just how they fly. It's not that they don't know where they're going. They know exactly where they're going because what do they use, Steve? Oh, nice. That is awesome. Well done. Thank you. What is that, friends? Digital guess. What is, what did Steve just use? What do bats use to navigate around and find prey while flying? Bats use it. Dolphins use yeah. it. Some whales use it. Some people who are, who are visual, visually impaired might yeah. use it. Mm -hmm. Echo. Echo. Echo location. Good job. I'm sure we had people I bet say we that. Did. Yeah, the echolocation, sending those clicks or whistles or noises into yeah. the world. And then as it bounces off of what's in front of them, they're able to tell how far away it is, the shape of it, the size of it. Location, that's, I mean, not location, direction of movement. Direction of movement. That's so cool. It is heavily tuned. And we even as people have been able to learn from yep. bats and dolphins to map the bottom of the ocean. Sonar. Mm -hmm. That's the exact same idea. Very true, yeah. So one other thing, let's get away from vampire bats for a second, but right. some people say, so, our, so the statement is, bats serve no purpose. Well, that one's definitely busted, Aww. Steve. Right? That's sad. Definitely busted. <laughs> so because one of the huge things about bats is they are amazing at controlling flying pests. For sure. They are huge mosquito eaters. 1,000 mosquito, on equivalent of 1,000 mosquitoes every hour. Amazing. Come on. Thank you, bats. Because no. I don't want to eat them. Digital friends, can we get a little thank you for the bats? Can we get a little love? Can you throw them some love? One of, and we could do a whole thing about bats. We, sure we could. love so bats. Maybe so we much. should. We, we definitely should. If you want us to do a whole thing about bats, let us know, friends. Yeah, say bats. Um, and they can bats. bats. Bats, bats, bats. Um, one of the things that kind of made me really like them too is their care of their mm. each other and their young. Um, that's, uh, that's another myth. Let's bust just all the myths. Over bust them all. That they are like rodents. They just have babies all the time. And that is also busted. Absolutely. They have babies busted. once a year. And sometimes like we've had twins here before. Yep. If they can't take care of their babies, the other, other bats will help take care of them too. An auntie bat. An auntie bat. Yep. We'll take it. There's just so much stuff. Amazing things to talk about. But we wanted to make sure they came to bats and our myth and our misadventures, misunderstandings, mm -hmm. I should say, about animals, because bats are really up there at the they, top of that list. They, for sure, are way up there so, on lots of myths. Great job, Chelsea, in sharing the bats. We are happy to have been able to do that. Bats at the North Carolina Zoo. True. All right, so we're not by the real polar bear, but I wanted to show you because it's really hard to get this close to a polar bear, even though sometimes they can come up really, really close to the glass here at the zoo. But I wanted to show you just how big they are because my myth might be swayed whether how you see this. So I don't have Steve with me right now. So I'm gonna ask Chelsea to see if she can tell if this myth is truth or it's busted. All right, you ready, Chelsea? I'm ready. All right, so the myth is that polar bears are human eaters. So they actively hunt humans. You know, polar bears are big. Right, yeah, right? But like, I mean, it's like the size of you. <laughs> but I don't, I can't recall in my 24 years of life, anybody ever telling me about a polar bear attack. Okay. So I'm going to say that it's busted. They do not actively hunt people. Okay, so you're saying we would probably hear more about it if they yeah, were, I, right? I feel like that's a big animal. So right. You hear nothing about <laughs> All right, so what do we think, everybody? Do you think it's truth or busted? Are you on Chelsea's side? The answer is busted. Good job, Chelsea. So yes, it is busted. They are a very large animal. I'm about five feet, so on all fours, they could be about five feet. Some males can get really, really heavy, and most average, like over a thousand pounds. So yeah, they are a very large animal that eats large food, seals. They need that seal to maintain that blubber layer. So they do hunt very large animals that can be like 250 pounds. So one would think 
that they could actively hunt humans too. But they have a really amazing sense of smell. Look at this great big skull right here. This is a replica. You can see this amazing huge nose with lots of folds all in it. And all those folds help them smell incredibly well, way better than we can. In fact, one of the best senses of smell in the whole entire animal kingdom, right here, polar bear. So they know how to smell seals, different polar bears, humans, trash. They know what they all smell like. So I feel like you're right. If they were really actively trying to hunt humans, we would hear a lot more about it because they would know the exact smell of a human. But they tend to stay away from them, even though they are such large animals. Now here's the problem is that polar bears need ice flows, which is kind of like areas of broken up ice um, that they are able to hunt from. They're able to sit and wait and hang out for that seal. And then they open up their giant mouth, grab that seal, able to pull it out. And if there are no more ice flows or there are less ice flows throughout the year, then they tend to get closer and closer and closer to where people oh, live. Okay. So they might be forced to be where people are, whether right, they want right, right, to right. be there or not. Exactly. So because of that, it's super important that we have those ice flows for them. And one of the things that's um, causing that to be a problem, do you happen to know, Chelsea? Uh, I'm going to take a stab in the dark okay. and say climate change. Correct. Yeah, climate change. So when we burn fossil fuels um, like coal, oil, and natural glass, glass, gas, we release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And all of that carbon dioxide gets absorbed into the atmosphere and thickens it. And it kind of acts like a heat trapping blanket. Makes things super hot, reflects it back down onto the earth. And that happens twice as quickly in the Arctic, where these guys are from. And so those ice caps can, or those ice flows are able to melt quicker and they don't form as, as early in the year. So yeah, it's kind of pushing them further and further inwards towards dumpsters where they can get lots and lots of delicious food and around people. So you may have heard them being around people a little bit more nowadays. And that's all because their habitat is kind of changing. So there's a couple of things that you could do real quick because I don't want to leave you just with that. I want to give you an action because we need to save the polar bears, right, in the Arctic. And one thing that you can do is during the summer, you can turn your air conditioning down two degrees or during the winter, you can turn it up two degrees. And those two degrees changes can reduce a lot of energy that will help reduce the amount of carbon dioxide released into the atmosphere. So myth, not, not people hunters. But definitely getting closer and closer to people. You ready to go to our next one? I'm ready, Leslie. Good job, everyone. Rhinoceros. Rhino. You all love rhinos, right? Yeah, I love rhinos and I love puns. So. <laughs> I was going to say, I love rhinos, but I'm not a fan of the pun. Oh, <laughs> Chelsea. Oh, well. Rhino, you don't like them, and I'll try to be better at it later. <laughs> Oh, Steve. I'm sorry. Okay, okay, okay. So, yeah, we are here at Rhinoceros talking about myths, obviously. Um, but I would like to do... Chelsea, how can you can you show our guests the, the horn of the rhino? Can you see him okay best. in there, you think? Yeah, if you look really close, you can see them. Okay, that's good. That'll work. Oh, here comes one real close to us. This looks this looks like Olivia. Her horn kind of sticks straight out. I thought this was a different one earlier. This is Olivia. Her horn sticks straight out. She's an old girl, by the way, just kind of sidebar. She's over 50. I believe she's 52 years old. There you can see how the, the horn kind of sticks straight out. Leslie. Steve. Horn use, thank you. Horn use in a rhino right. includes what? Well, I think it's really nice to see on Olivia right now mm -hmm. because she's very orange, which is not like their natural state. But <laughs> good point. Um, they, yeah, their color is gray, and they need that horn to kind of dig. Oh yeah. And create what help create wallows, um, and then the mud goes onto their skin. It's a nice sunblock. It's a nice way to cool them down and bug repellent. Oh, nice. And that's why we have orange rhinos at the North Carolina Zoo because of all that <laughs> lovely Carolina clay. I so. love it. Mm -hmm. Olivia gracing her with our pre gracing us with her presence today. Yeah. That's very nice. And again, she's a very old and she's not out all the time, mm -hmm. digital friends. She's about every other day. It's totally her choice. She can come out if she wants and stay there if not. 
Um, but since we're all about myths today, the question to you, digital friends, myth or fact, the rhino's horn is made of bone. The rhino's horn is made of bone. Is that a myth or fact? It's a great question. Thanks. Let me think. I'm going to see what I think. Let's see. So the rhino's horn got a great look of one's looking right at you over here. I can't tell who that is from this distance. Um, looks like the horn's a little bit more stocky, so I'm going to guess that's Linda. The horn is one of the things that the keepers use to identify the individual animals. Each horn looks a little bit different than some of the animals. But it's definitely still hard from far away. For yeah, it sure. is, for sure. <laughs> All right, so. so what I'm thinking, here's my thoughts. It definitely looks thick. It does look thick. It looks strong. Yep. And it kind of looks like a bone to me. So, so I'm going to say, say that's true. So Leslie says the rhino's horn is made of Got bone. It. True. Let's see the right answer. Busted! It is. And... We can cheat. We have a little small piece of a rhino horn right over here that I was keeping secret. I didn't want you to see it before the question came. But this I, is what a rhino I mean, horn looks like. It's still like, you know. It's very it's, hard. It is. Yeah. Like I, if I looked at this, I wouldn't necessarily 100% say that. Okay. It doesn't look like bone. You're right. And look at the yeah. edges. That's where you really begin to see it. You can look at the edges here. It's wow. actually made of fibers. Okay. So it's the same stuff. Your hair and your fingernails are made up of. Do you know that word? Uh, I know you know. I know it. Do you think Chelsea does? I think she does. Keratin? Nice. That's keratin. And it's the same thing your digital friends, your fingernails and your hair is made of. So the rhino horn is actually made of all those fibers just compressed and pushed together over time. They also look really thick. Mm -hmm. So like even when you do see the little fibers, they're very they're like much thicker than like most Good hair. Good point. Great point. But like you said, our fingernails are also made out of keratin. So it is thing. it is very it is very similar in a lot of ways. That's pretty yeah. neat, yeah. So that is a myth. All right. Rhino horn is made of keratin and not bone. Busted. Busted. Love it. So, what's next? Let's go. So, flamingos, Leslie? Mm hmm. Myths and facts about flamingos? What you got for me? I'm ready. Let's go I'm gonna get with one. the myth okay. is they get their pink color from the food that they eat. That's the myth. Is it a myth? That's a statement. Follow-up question. Follow-up question? What do they eat? The food that they eat. <laughs> we'll do that. We'll follow I up. Thought, That's I thought question. I was going to trick them. So, digital friends, flamingos get their pink color from the food that they eat. Myth or busted? All right. I think I know this one. You do? Mm-hmm. All right. Because I, I have seen some documentaries about flamingos. Well, we we do know that documentaries can't... Well, I guess it really wasn't a documentary that led you down the wrong path with Gorilla. But that wasn't a documentary, though. So no, that was King Kong. That was King Kong. <laughs> and if that's a documentary, it. then... <laughs> we have, hmm, challenges out that there. That is very scary that there's that tall of a gorilla somewhere. All right. Anyways, let's, anyways. Let's get Leslie's <laughs> answer. Let's get Leslie's answer to this. I'm saying true. True. You're they saying get, true. Yes, true. They get their pink color, pinkish color. From the food. From the food that they, that they eat. Well, I, you said true. Let's find out, ladies and gentlemen, people out there. True it is. Excellent job. Um, Follow-up question, okay. as you mentioned. What do they, they eat? They get their color from the food that they eat. What are they eating? Shrimp oh. and other small mm -hmm. crustaceans. And that mm -hmm. pink color is kind of drawn out into the flamingos, the feathers of the flamingos. Have you ever done the experiment when you were little, you have, you put celery in colored water and that celery kind of pulled up the different colors? 
Where you put a paper towel in colored yeah, water. Yeah, I was gonna say not celery specifically, but yes, I've done it. I've done that that uh, science experiment. It's before. kind of the same idea, not okay. 100, but you get the idea that you can transfer those colors up. A uh, couple of little fun facts in here. Uh, hey, I have they, a question before we, before we move on. So, what color would they be if they weren't eating? Well, oh, that was the that was gonna be the amazing fun fun oh. fun, fun question. Question: Did you realize that they actually are pink their entire lives? Steve. They are pink. Steve. They're and Steve. Yeah. But it's stop a... lying to our guests. <laughs> Steve. Wait, they're not. They're not always pink. They are not always pink. Okay, bird nerd Chelsea. <laughs> what color are they when they're hatched? When they're hatched, they're actually gray. Oh. Gray. Really? They are. They're gray. They're they're not as pretty, but not they're not... still cute. They're not pink. They're not pink. Yeah. So that, I was sending people down the wrong wrong path there, huh? Yeah, see that flamingo Ooh. was like, Steve, I you need wrong. to pay attention. Ooh. He said, okay. yeah, Chelsea, you're right. All right, all right. So yeah, okay, so baby flamingo chicks are gray, and as they begin to eat that food, that's when they become pink. Yeah. Okay, 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 That's that was not good for me. Well, look at this other interesting thing that they're doing over here, right? It's called sitting down. I know, but it's like backwards. Oh my goodness, look at the knees. Those aren't knees. Don't look at the knees, he's late. You bend down like that, the knees are- Chelsea, what are they then? Steve, you're fired. No, 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 digital friends, help me out here. Those are knees. Look where it is in the body, Chelsea, come on. That doesn't make them knees. What do you think they are? Okay, what are they? They're, so, I, and fun. My my boss at the other job. I was trying to explain it to him, and yep. he, he called them their pre ankles. But <laughs> pre ankles. But they're prankles. <laughs> but so you're trying to say that's an ankle. Yes. They're they are not their knees. Where are their knees? Okay, wait, wait. Can you show them this one up here standing up, Chelsea? Show them the one that's standing but that's up. That's like where our knees are. See, that's where. I, that's what I was going to say, Leslie. That's exactly what I was going to say. Look at that joint. That's where the knee is. Huh. But that's the ankle but you're saying. But those are pre ankles. Those ankles. are prankles. So they stand <laughs> on their tippy toes? Sort of, yeah. Neat. So the one that's laying down again, that's kind of the foot, huh? Yeah. So um, you can't actually see our, their femur, which is like the top part of our oh, leg. Oh, nice. So their femur is up kind of in their feathers. It's in the huh. back. And then there's the another joint that connects the femur to the the bone that you can see that's kind of towards the top of their leg. So the knee and the hip are kind of up in the body? Yeah. In this in this shot? Yeah. Wow. Okay, here's my question, uh, Chelsea. That's crazy. Yeah, let's just so, Chelsea and her birds. So is that basically like, okay, there's the ankle, mm -hmm. and then the other part is like really long, and that's part of their foot, and then almost like the end is like, like our toes? Or like, what is it? I'm so confused. Or is it just different, yeah, so, and it's not like us? So like we've got our... We've got our ankle, right? Right, and then we've got like the what we call kind of like the ball of our foot, like where our toes uh -huh. are. So kind of like up where their what looks like their knee is actually part of their ankle. Wow. Oh, okay. So their knee doesn't actually their leg doesn't actually bend backwards. That's just the foot that's bending like our ankle would. Yes. Yeah. That that's, how, that's how. That's It does. So, if yeah. you look at it and you kind of break it down that way. Interesting. It's exactly. Very interesting. What it looks like. So I was one for three. Oh man, That's not we good on learned flamingos. we learned so many things today. We had so many myths busted. That's I'm glad we had Chelsea with us. <laughs> oh, this was a good one. That's very short. <laughs> Let's keep on keeping on. What do you think? Oh yeah. Myths, misunderstandings, facts. Mm -hmm. Some learned, really good ones. I learned a lot today. Some cool I, stuff. Out I was there. about 50-50. Yeah, you didn't do on too bad. You did good. My what was not necessarily true, but a lot of people might. Think yep. and then what is actually true. So, yeah, yeah. Chelsea, yeah. Chelsea didn't do too bad either. Yeah, she did about it. So I think we asked her a couple. Well, Chelsea got like all of them. She, so, she's I mean, like, you know how she is. <laughs> it's like so, she studied beforehand. I have one more. Okay. Myth or truth? Okay. Leslie hmm? is really this tall. I've just been crouching. You've just been yeah, slouching the this whole time. For the past four years. I think it's true. I think so this, are, this, this is, feels normal to me. This is good. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. Is good. I just I have really long legs. All right. Even though like my torso is very short. Got you. I have very long it's legs. Gotta be a, it's gotta be really hard to find pants. Yeah, it, it is. <laughs> I get two and then I sew them together. <laughs> That's well you should. We'll let that go with that. So <laughs> from your zoo adventures team today, you were I'm Leslie, everyone. I am Steve. Behind the camera is... Chelsea. 
as always happy to have her thank you so much for tuning in and if you come in if you tune in next time you'll find out if the truth or the fact is that leslie is really this tall who's to say stay safe we'll see you later all bye <laughs>